So in this video, I'll talk about another mechanism for generating power law distributions, and that's combinations of exponential functions or exponential distributions. As with a lot of the other power law mechanisms in this unit, I won't be able to go into too many of the mathematical details, but I think I can explain the general idea um, in, a, in a pretty understandable way. So what I'll do is describe this idea, then do a little bit of math with it, and then talk about some of the possible applications. So first, let's think about exponential distributions. So exponential distributions arise when there's some fixed probability, some constant unchanging probability per unit time of an event occurring. And the example we used before was um, how long, how many attempts it would take me when I crumple up a paper, piece of paper to get it into the recycling. Ate it. Um, that, right, so sometimes I'm going to get it in one throw, sometimes two, sometimes three, and there's a fixed probability that chance that I make every given shot is the same. And so we'll see an exponential distribution of times to success, of waiting times to success. Um, similarly, let's imagine that there's some fixed probability per unit time. Now, not that I make a shot into the recycling bin, but instead, there's a fixed probability per unit time that um, a new pile of papers gets started on my desk. So I try to stay organized. I'm rarely successful, and I start a pile of papers, and then that pile of papers is going to grow. Or there's some fixed probability per unit time that some new web page is added, or a new website is added to the World Wide Web, or that a new species or genera or something gets, gets created. So then the question is, at any given moment in time, what would the, be the distribution of ages of piles on my desk? Um, and actually, as I look over at my desk encounters now, some of these piles are very old, maybe a year or two old, things I haven't figured out how to file yet. And some of them are quite new. And if there's a fixed probability per unit time that piles get created, then it turns out that we would expect an exponential distribution of ages of piles. Similarly, for any those other situations, there would be an exponential distribution of ages of websites or of ages of um, genera, or something like that. So now, let's say that individual objects um, within whose ages we're interested in, so like a particular, the, the pile on my desk, um, let's imagine that that grows exponentially, at least on average, or the number of pages on a website. So a new website starts small, but it might get larger and larger, or the number of species in a genera, or the number of genes in a gene family, that those tend to grow exponentially on average. So then we might want to say, at any given time, what's the distribution of number of genes in a gene family, or um, the size of a website as measured by the number of um, pages on it, or the size of one of my piles on my desk. And so it turns out that this combination of exponentials, so exponential lifetimes together with exponential growth, means that at any given moment, we would expect a power law distribution. So this is noteworthy, I think, because exponential distributions, as I've argued, are memoryless. In that, but by which I mean the probability is constant all the time. Um, the probability that I make a shot is the same no matter what's happened before. So it's like I take a shot, I miss it, and then I have no memory of that, and I take a shot and I make it or not with the same probability. So exponential distributions are memoryless in that sense. So here we have two memoryless processes that combine to produce a power law. So let me write some equations to accompany the story that I just told. So the picture is, suppose we have some quantity that grows exponentially. So we've got some exponential growth. So we'll call that quantity x. And maybe it grows like this. So mu is some parameter that tells us how fast it's growing. 
um, exponential growth. So then, um, and maybe these are the number of pages on a website or the number of files on a computer or the number of genes in a gene family or the um, height of uh, piles that are growing, growing on my desk. So I've got exponential growth. But these piles have different ages. So we're going to let the um, ages be distributed uh, according to some probability p of t e to the minus nu t. So we have a distribution of ages. We could also think about this as a whole bunch of things, um, piles that say get started at the same time, but then have a probability of extinction. So uh, in any event, exponential growth with a distribution of ages. And so then I'm going to um, let x is going to be e to the mu t. So if I want to know the distribution of these things, x, I'm going to plug in, well, uh, a, a distribution of times. Not everything is the same age. So x is a new random variable that uh, is e to the mu t, where t is this random variable given by that exponential. So then we can ask, um, what's the distribution of x? Distribution of x. And so we'll call that p of x. This would be a probability density function. And it's given by some constant and then this power law form nu over mu plus 1. So uh, the derivation of this follows from a little bit of probability in calculus. Uh, it's a bit more than a math than I think I can go into, um, just a little bit beyond the scope of this course. But the basic idea, I hope, is clear. If we have something that's growing exponentially and we sample it at some times that are themselves exponentially distributed, those exponentials conspire to make a power law. And this is a fairly mathematically robust result. So um, if we have exponential growth, but in also a distribution of mu's, so uh, it's only sort of on average that they're growing exponential. So this could be a fluctuating quantity. It can differ a little bit from x to x. Um, similar, similarly for this uh, exponent nu. Um, so uh, quite generically, um, with some looser assumptions than I've put forth here, combining exponentials like this will give you a nice power law like this. So combining exponential functions in the way I've described is viewed as um, a possible general mechanism that can explain uh, many of the power laws or near power laws that we observe. The mathematics of what I've just started to touch on is described more fully in uh, a nice paper <clears throat> about 10 or 15 years ago by Reed and Hughes. And I'll put, um, put that reference here and a link to that is in the additional resources section. Um, it's also discussed nicely in the review article by Newman on Pareto and power laws. So those are good places to start if you want to um, dig deeper and um, <clears throat> do a little bit more of the math, see a little bit more of the mathematics behind this. So again, uh, just to recap, anytime we have a situation where we have exponential growth on average, and so where growth is somehow proportional to the current number of uh, objects, so and that's very similar to this, <clears throat> this idea of preferential attachment. Those that are big tend to grow faster than those that are small. So that can be the case for the number of species in a genera, the number of genes in a gene family, the number of pages. Um, on a particular website, <clears throat> maybe the population in a city, all of these things might tend to grow exponentially on average. But if we have um, a distribution of times, all of these things aren't uh, the same age. Um, not all gene families started at the same time. Not all genera started at the same time. Not all web pages, of course, started at the same time. And if that distribution of times is itself described by an exponential, all of a sudden we have a power law. Um, again, one of the things I think is interesting about this particular mechanism is that exponentials are, um, in the sense, memoryless. It's just a constant probability per time. 
Um, there's no distinguishing one moment from the next. Every moment is the same. There's no memory, there's no history. Nevertheless, it produces power laws that have these, um, the, the property of a long tail, um, which to some might look like some sort of a long, um, a long memory or some sort of an organization across space or time because of this sort of scale-free property. But to the contrary, we see that we can get power laws from combining memoryless functions. So it's a nice and interesting model uh, in that sense, and we'll see that it contrasts pretty sharply with some of the other possible models and mechanisms for generating power laws that we'll learn about later in this unit.